Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, I've got the covers finally off the koi pond, the temperature's warmed up, and these guys are looking very hungry. Now, I've had them on the wheat germ and garlic formula now for quite a while, for about, I would say, a couple of, well, I would say quite, about two weeks, I would say, when the covers were taken off. We had a bit of a cold spell, I put them back on again, but now they're, they've been removed. Lots of light flooding in now from outside. And they're very happy. The temperature is quite, quite warm now. It's up to about, it's up to about 15, 15 and a half degrees at the moment, and warming up all the time. And like I said, I've had them on the wheat germ and the garlic um, food by NT Labs before that. That's the one I tend to use. It's like a medicated formula. And if they've got any signs, because they've been dormant throughout the winter, and I haven't been feeding them um, for some time. Their little immune systems have been running down. There's little Rocket there, my little butterfly koi. He's looking absolutely gorgeous this year. And it's not really until now they've come up and you see them and you can give them a good check over and make sure that they're all right. Now, there's a little bit of a little bit of slime on them and it's like a carp pox, it's called. And it's like these little blobs that grow on the fins and they tend to get this through the winter, more so when they're younger. Um, but if you do see it on your coin, they're only small. As you know, none of the bigger ones have got it. But one of the younger ones has got a bit on its lip. Some, uh, One of them's got it on its tail. That one, if you look right there, you can see that white on his tail. Now, that's a little bit as well. But that is going to go as the as that water warms up, that carp pox will clear up on its own. Don't go throwing lots of medications into your pond, trying to get rid of things early on in the year, okay? Because your filters are going to be right down biologically and there's not going to be enough in there and you start to pushing in all these different treatments for trichedema and things of that nature you're going to just have an awful time of it so really spend some time studying your fish now working out what's wrong with them and like i said just take it easy with the meds okay that's what i tend to do every single year and if i see something later on even if it's a little bit of trichedema and you see them itching scratching on the sides and things it's not amazing it's not a huge worry okay it's not something that you're going to have to get rid of instantly what i'm going to do is i've got some mealworms here which i've been slowly introducing into their diet because like i said i wanted to get that garlic into them first to boost that immune system and with the wheat germ as well the little stomachs can handle it more in the colder temperatures okay and as their bodies warm up it means they can process that food through them quicker and then they're not going to get gassed up and get blocked up. So many people I see, and some people email me saying, you know, oh, it's January, February time. My fish are, um, are going mad for food because the sun's up and they feed them. And then you get a bad weather spell for, you know, it could be up to a couple of weeks. And that food then, if it drops below 10 degrees, is not going to, um, it's not going to pass through their body. Their bodies can't digest it. So it will sit in their bodies. There, it'll gas them up, it'll rot in their stomachs and they'll end up with bloat and you'll lose them or it can, you know, at the worst case, you might lose them. Um, we're going to have to start treating them, okay? So I'm going to chuck in some of these and you can see them come up and have a feed. Come on in. They'll be up for them in seconds. They absolutely love them. And I've got some big guys in there as well. And it's just lovely to see them. And it's one thing I love to do is cut, get up nice and early in the morning. Listen to them go in there. Get up nice and early in the morning. Try and get that down a bit for you. Here you go, that's better. And um, and with my coffee, and come out here and say good morning to this gang. It's absolutely fabulous. The old Tancho there, looking lovely. Tancho, well, that cha Tancho Sankey now, I think he's got a lot more black on him. When I bought him, he was absolutely pure white with that lovely orange spot on his head, that rising sun. But um, but he's gone darker now as he's got older, and you find that with a lot of koi. You'll buy them and they'll look a certain way, but as they mature, they'll change. And that's why a lot of people buy these prize koi at a certain size, where their colours have stabilised. And they know what they're buying. That's why it's sometimes, when you buy the little fish you can end up with some real surprises and some real champions in amongst them that they've overlooked. So, um, 
sometimes it's nice to buy the young ones and they might grow up into something completely special you never know they're all special to me i don't really go much on the colors and the different types i've just got my little gang here and i love them to bits and i just love watching them cruise around in the summer on top of the water taking the feed the pellets out of my hands and my daughter and my wife it's lovely to watch them that lovely little waterfall go in there that's had a nice a nice plate clean out as well another thing guys if you've got uv sterilizers now's the time to obviously you can put them back on again change the bulbs always replace your bulbs after six months and um and replace those because that algae is going to be growing again and greening up your water so you can start those little guys off again if you've got one they're quite cheap to buy these days anyway so uh, you can buy them they're just a little inline one i put a video up i think it was last year how to fit a little evolution aqua one on this pond if you need to know how to fit one you can pop back and have a look at that but they're all looking lovely and healthy apart from that little bit of carp pox on them that's all i can see and that's fabulous stuff it really is i know some people that have had a right time keeping koi and things going wrong And the thing is, it's stable water, correct? Make sure your waters are stable as well. Make sure your KH is right. They like a bit of a higher KH. And we've got soft water here in Wales, so I've got to add KH to the water and bring it and buffer it up. So, um, I've got to keep adding that, because as you can see, just down here, I've got my little drip feed, which is a constant drip feed, which goes into this regularly all the time okay and i've got it through a, a little three stage chlorine remover which you can buy off of ebay i'll just show you it actually it's up here i can just swing you around pardon me but that's the one i use there in amongst all my other stuff and that just basically comes straight from the mains it goes through that one first and you've got a couple of carbon blocks in there which takes all that horrible chlorine and chloramine out and it just drops it all the way in it's not it's not reverse osmosis water because you have to go through a, a membrane to get that and to strip everything else out but it just removes all that horrible stuff so if you don't want to keep buying all this chlorine remover and spending a fortune on that i think that was about 35 40 quid so if you've got room for one you can always stick that in your garage and you can run those ro lines all over the place they're only five mil they're very very thin and you can make them you dig a little trench through your garden and have them poking into your pond and it'll do your water changes for you with a couple of drips it'll just overflow i swear by them i really do anyway guys i thought i'd give you a quick little wednesday update i've been quite busy this week in my coral room so we're gonna have another um, another video coming up shortly about that I've got the all the salts in now and the waters in I've got a lovely big chunk of coral, a huge lump of coral in there which I've drilled and put in there um, all the pumps are going the sump's done skimmers in and it's all looking spot on at the moment a few other things to do another little bank of tanks to build but I'll get into that on that video anyway guys hope you like that little short video for Wednesday with the update of the koi a few of you have been asking about these guys so there they are. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, you're all stars. Love you loads. Take care, and I will see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.